Today we are building a high-end custom PC inside of one of my favorite cases of all time. But before that, we better fuel up because this is gonna be a massive task. And to do that, we're gonna need today's video sponsor. If you are feeling hungry for some delicious, quick, easy to prepare food delivered right to your doorstep, then today's video sponsor, HelloFresh, is perfect for you. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service, meaning no more grocery stores, no more stressful meal planning. It's easy and affordable. The last thing you wanna think about after a long, hard days of work is wondering what are you gonna make for dinner? HelloFresh makes this easy with their simple step-by-step -step guides. Some meals can be done in 20 minutes or less. The ingredients are pre-portioned so you're not wasting money on excess food and reducing waste. This is great for your wallet and the environment. You can pick from a variety of delicious meals suitable for your dietary needs. Recipes change from week to week so you're always able to try new recipes and flavors. We've used HelloFresh for the past two years and Amelia has cooked some banger meals we highly recommend. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGIFR16 for up to 16 free meals, plus three surprise gifts across six HelloFresh boxes, plus free shipping. The Fantex Evolve X, a case you have not seen on this channel for a very long time. Mate, we are super excited to be doing a build in this high-end case. Comes with three pre-installed DRGB 140mm fans and will be utilizing majority of its cooling space to fit two 360mm radiators to cool the system. This case was built with high-end water cooling in mind with a large cutout to fit thicker radiators at the front and the top radiator has plenty of space between it and the top of the ramp which is usually a limiting factor in most cases. For this particular case, due to the fact that we'll be utilizing two 360mm radiators, we'll be removing the pre-installed 140mm fans as the two pieces of hardware are not compatible. The ROG Maximus Z690 formula is pretty much the only white motherboard we had, and we actually just got this one back from repair. The other one had some problems with the uh, memory channels for some reason. I'm not, not exactly sure what the issue was, but we got a full replacement board in. And so we pretty much get to show you guys the peeling. I know you guys like the peeling, but not only that, look how gorgeous this motherboard is. So we have such a high-end build today, and for that, I wanna pair that with a high-end processor. So we've got our Intel Press Media Kit out, which came with the i5 and the i9-12900K CPU. We're gonna be using the i9 today with its 16 cores and 24 threads. This is going to be one beast of a CPU. To install a CPU, mate, all you have to do is just push down the latch, lift her up, lift the socket cover, take a squiz at the CPU, there should be a small gold triangle in the corner, line that with the triangle on the socket. It can only go in one way, so don't be forceful, then close it back up the way it was undone. So we've been using the Corsair MP600 in quite a few builds, but now we are going with the Pro version. This is Corsair's top of the line M.2, it's Gen 4, and this is four terabytes. We're actually not going to be using the heatsink on this because the motherboard actually has its own. So I'm gonna be removing that. And the top slot is usually where you want to install the NVMe drive. These drives actually perform better at a hot temperature, but not overcooking them, which is why they still require a heatsink for passive cooling in some cases, especially these high-end Gen 4 drives. Just please don't forget to remove the protective film from both the top and the bottom, and then latch it or screw it in, depending on your motherboard. This is our Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM in DDR5. It is 5600 megahertz, 32 gigs in total. I've been using these in quite a few builds because it's the only white RAM that we really own. So I'm curious from you guys, down in the comments below, let me know of any other white RAM DDR5, if possible, that you guys would like us to do some builds with so that it's not always repeating the same process. RAM is one of those things that only goes in one way or not at all. All you have to do is line up the notches at the bottom of the RAM stick with the notches in the RAM slot. Usually if you have two sticks, you have to utilize slots A2 and B2 for best performance. Now we had a company reach out to us that I've been a fan of for quite a while. This is the Glacier C360i from Fantex. 
they reached out and wanted us to do a build with them and I could not be more happy because we've loved their cases and their water cooling gear from ages. I used to have a contact and we finally found someone else. So I can't wait to get this in the system. When applying thermal paste, little is more. However, overdoing it will not affect the performance. Excess paste will just be pushed out the sides once applying pressure. The CPU block should not be over tightened. This could cause stress on the motherboard and the socket, leading to something failing, or you can crack the acrylic itself. It is important to tighten the block gradually with opposite corners being tightened slightly to ensure a nice even spread of the thermal paste for best cooling potential. These are our Leon Lee AL120 RGB fans, this time in white. And I can't even remember the last time we did a build with the white uh, Leon Lee fans. The AL120s are their newest version. You may have seen us use the SL120s quite a few times, but these look super clean. They only have two cables that do the power and the RGB, and they all connect together. Really smart design. Here is what I mean by they all connect together. It saves excess cable mess, meaning your overall build is clean and tidy at the back. We have two CLM 360 radiators from Thermaltake. These are 40 millimeters in thickness. They don't have a high fin density. So their fin density is 14 FPI, which means that the Leon Lee fans are gonna have no trouble at all pushing the air through the fins. But where it makes up from that is these are 40 millimeters thick rather than your usual 29 millimeters thick that you might get in a slim radiator. So effectively you're getting more surface cooling area within the same area constraints, which is absolutely fantastic. So I had actually received a water block from Fantex themselves for the Aorus RTX 3090. Unfortunately, that was DOA, so I have no choice but to put our Asus Strix card in there. Uh, this has an EK Active backplate and uh, plate on the front as well. I'll give you guys a bit of an unboxing because this was already uh, water blocked, so I kind of don't have the footage to show you guys at the moment, but I have pre-recorded it.
Fantex also sent out their Glacier D140 uh, distribution plate. So this particular plate actually goes at the back of the case and all of the tubes can route to it. And it's got a really nice mirrored finish. I guess it's an acrylic at the back. Um, so it looks really nice. Can't wait to get this in use. This is the Fantex Revolt X power supply. It is 80 plus platinum rated. And I actually didn't even know Fantex made power supplies, but this power supply is actually a Seasonic power supply. So you know that it's gonna be super reliable and 1200 watts. That's gonna be like plenty for the system. Lots of headroom. I mean, so far from what I've seen online, the power supply looks amazing and we're about to unbox it now. So we'll actually see what it looks like. That's it, a really nice clean design. The top has like a metal sort of finish to it. It's gonna go nice in this system. This is the Fantex R220C Glacier, uh, I guess, reservoir. It doesn't come with a pump though. I'm not sure we're actually gonna be able to use this in the build. I might have to swap it out for something different. I don't really have any spare DDC pumps lying around, so we'll go ahead and swap this out. After looking at the inside of the case, we really do not have much room left to work with. Graphics cards are getting so much bigger these days and there is no longer that much room to work with to add in a single pump res combo. This never used to be an issue in this case due to its decent size. So we decided to go with the EK FLT 80 pump combo. I don't want to stick it down just yet because I might move it around when I'm doing the tubing just in case I accidentally bend a tube too short or too long. That's not really going to matter.
you so much for watching guys. I hope you all enjoyed that build video. Links are down in the description to all of the specs. If you would like to join our Discord community, I will leave that down below as well. We are doing monthly giveaways, so I hope to see you all over there. If you'd like to support us, Patreon or YouTube channel memberships is the best way to do that. Without that, we wouldn't be able to do builds like this. Leave your comments below. What would you change about this build and what did you like about this build? Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you all in the next one.